All right, we will start recording. Today is the 24th, September. Tough week, tough closing. The last three closes were pretty bad. The one on Friday felt bad, wasn't bad, like the scoreboard wasn't so bad. But the way it unfolded late in the day was the same as the last two days before it, which were bad, really bad. So the Bears definitely won last week, and they put some technical damage. And I'm going to start this session just like I'm going to do tonight with the technical damage on the SPY and what I would do about it. So we're looking at the SMP SPY. They triggered a head and shoulders, which I talked about last week, and it looks the worst on the SPY. So the bad news is that I'm going to scare you first. The SPY can go to 408 to 412 which is down here. Okay, so technically speaking, this is an additional, um, this is not a forecast. I'm telling you the worst case scenario here. So it's another 5%. Last week I said there would be a 5% and we're like 2% into that 5. This would be an additional 5. One second, I will share that screen. Thanks for the heads up. Somebody's paying attention. There you go. Okay, so we're looking at the SPY, nothing fancy. I don't have any lines on it. I'm just regurgitating the message from last week. The, the fact that we lost 433, 431, we are headed what could be 408, 412, which will be down here in that area. So it would come back to the baseline of the breakout. This would be normal price action, but it's going to feel horrible. The way it, it usually unfolds is a series of rallies and falls. So what I'm telling you, expect downside and be ready for downside. And also, we should see some potential upside. Don't trust that upside. So if you see purple-like behavior, this rally, don't trust it because we could be headed here. Now... I think we will stop somewhere before that, like 420, 418, 422, if we don't come out of it. And we could probably see it better on the SPX. These lines have been here for weeks. Um, I have upside and downside scenarios, and this was the downside scenario. This will be the equivalent to that 408-ish area. So it's nothing new. We had hoped we would avoid it. Now, here's the decent news is that we could avoid it. This is the S&P futures. So the futures have been lower. We do have weakness, but it doesn't have to be all the way down to the worst case scenario. We could just cover the weakness from the June rally on the back of Nvidia and just get it out of their system. Because overall, this is still a bullish chart that bottomed last October. We have higher lows and higher highs. Now we made a lower high. We haven't made lower, significant lower lows yet. Um, it all depends on the time frame we're looking at. So here's the story for the week. We are destined for lower prices unless the bulls pull out a miracle. Okay. And the SPY probably gives you the best reference, the scariest reference. So play with that so you would be safest. Use rallies. I plan on using rallies to get out of trouble. So I have three credit put spreads that are under fire. One of them expires this week. I will need to roll that out because it's in the money. So either take shares, and that I would, I'm going to put out a video on that, or roll it. Rolling it means just buy myself more time without a lot of extra money out of pocket. So I will use any strength to get out of trouble, fix things. Okay, so that's the big picture. Let's jump into what was asked today. We do have a lot of tickers. <laughs> Let's start with Apple because that's the first alphabetically uh, aligned ticker here. So everything is alphabetical. And um, these are tickers that you have asked for. All right. And I'm going to put it on like a one hour chart to show everything in relation. Keep everything in mind in relation to that S&P chart I showed you because um, stocks don't trade in a vacuum. They have to go with the ticker. With, uh, with the market, I should say. So if the markets are falling, I doubt Apple's going to rally all by itself. Temporarily, it holds up a little bit better than the rest because money hides in Apple on panic, but eventually they all slide lower. 
So we traded Apple twice successful, successfully by uh, selling a put spread twice. Okay, I closed both of them because they both yielded more than 50% of the maximum gains and I just closed them. I said I'm closing winners early, right? And somebody said, you may have said close those in the live room and I'm missing some things. I don't, I don't say anything in the live room that's pertinent to long-term trades unless somebody specifically asks. So it only takes three minutes to pop into the live room and ask. The reason I make myself available nine hours a day, actually more, is to give you the opportunity to take a five minute break from your day, pop in and ask, hey, what did you do about this? Um, but my message has been always, I'm closing winners early, right? And now we have a few losers that have time on the clock, so they may still work out okay. If they're running out of time, I'm just gonna roll them out. Okay, I sent out a couple of videos on Friday or Thursday updating on those tickers. Okay, um, back to Apple. If we lose the recent low in Apple, which is 173, give or take, we might end up in the high 60s, 169, 172, 171, 167. So we may, able, we may be able to get long Apple in this area. So I sold put spreads to make money off of fear on bad stints and those played out. So if it ends up falling to here, I will reissue the same trade for myself. I would sell more put spreads, maybe not the same exact one if it runs out of time, and maybe also add some calls or call spreads. Because if this happens and Apple falls to here, the S&P is probably falling and trying to hit support. Okay, we have AbV. I don't trade this ticker because of the, hi Dave. Thanks for being here, wow, we already filled up. Um, so this is the industry itself is not attractive to me because they have so much headline risk um, this is not an obvious entry point there's a gap above i know people love to chase gaps but not every not every gap fills but we do have one above so it may pop to 158 and if so it would be an exit point not an entry point so if you can make money you think you can make money between 152 and 158 go for it it's not for me it's just too cute in this market Adobe, uh, I on a daily basis, Adobe could be at 440. 460 is target one, 400 is target two. In a series, like if the S&P drifts lower 5%, Adobe will probably be at 460 this week or next. And if it bounces from there and the market continues to fall, it could be below 420. That's not a promise, it's a risk. So if I'm looking to get long, I should be patient. Now, if I'm trading Adobe, I can go long and close on rallies. If I'm investing in Adobe and I'm already long, I don't add. I would add if it goes down to 420, then I would be at a blended price in between those two and would be okay. But um, if I'm looking to get long, I would sell a put spread or sell a put way down below in order to own it way down below. But to chase it with calls, it's a trade, not an investment. I think it can go lower. It's too vulnerable. The company's fine. I'm just making comments on the chart. AIG, definitely not for me up here. Definitely not for me. There's a lot of risk available here. Um, higher high, yes. Higher low, yes. But even if you consider that it's in the hands of the bulls, they are, they are buying dips. They will buy the dip. But do you want to be the person that buys this dip? And where will this dip start? here 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 i don't know and i don't care it's not for me i think it will be at it's easier for it to be at 58 than 65. Ooh, okay so look prior fail maybe this is a breakout that gets it to 70 but i would want to get long on the dip not chasing it into a prior fail so it is investable but make sure you're trading it properly um i think this is victoria asking for this um, PNL on ALB is fantastic, but I'm always suspect of PNLs that completely transform themselves in one year, like the shipping industry for a bit. I'm drawing a blank on the name of the company that delivered $17 in, uh, they made so much money out of nowhere in one year that they had to pay a special dividend of 17, um, Zim, Z-I-M, the Israeli company. Uh, th th when, when somebody goes from making, um, a net income of 100 million to 3 billion almost. I ask questions, okay? 
So be careful with ALB. It looks fantastic. Um, so I had credit put spread question mark September. That was somebody asking a question here. So if you had done that, you would have probably gotten away with it or are on the brink of having to de defend it. Um, so let's see from a levels perspective. Okay, this is some scary stuff right here. Technically speaking, you're losing a pretty strong support from May. You're at a pretty strong support from March of last year. You're at the breakout from summer of 2021 where everybody went drunk in the market. And you're way above the pandemic. Um, so I wouldn't touch that thing up here, to be honest. And if I do, it better be a starter position. So here's the deal. If somebody loves this company and they want to own shares, you could rally to 200. I don't deny it. But the risk of it being at 110 or 20 or 30 is huge. So it is a realistic possibility, I should say, better than huge. So if I wanted to own 200 shares, I would buy 100 now. And if it gets cut like I think it could, I would add the second 100 down below so you're in the middle long as opposed to being long out here and then you have to add on your problem. What I'm saying, Victoria, don't take a full-size position. If you're already long, I wouldn't add. Hey, Matt. Oh, she's here. Yay. <laughs> okay, applied materials. Um, falling into first levels of support. Now, if they bounce, they could end up doing this circle right here. So uh, there is a gap up there, but there's a lot of sellers waiting. By the way, this was our target. So it's not like we didn't see it coming. And now they could come back to the neckline, just like the S&P. Uh, not, my, not my gem, as they say, applied materials up here. They do have support through 125 and 124. This is undeniable. So we could slide down there and we could bounce and we could curl back down and end up lower. But if it goes above 156, the bulls are in complete control from the short term basis. I can't see left. It might be even a high. Um, so respect the bulls, but don't expect the bullish rally. The market might dictate where the stock goes. AMD. Um, I've been saying that AMD, they asked me what about AMD here falling into support. I said, I think AMD could be in the 98, 95 area soon. I wouldn't touch it. I'll tell you why. I, I, NVIDIA and AMD used to be two like synonymous to each other. Oh, both eating Intel's lunch. Well, it's now NVIDIA. It's no longer AMD anymore. And um, technically, it's easier for it to drift lower, maybe to 88, than it is to come back to 112. Uh, there will be bounces towards 102, 104. 104 was its death <laughs> when I did that chart a couple years ago. Up here, I said if it loses 104 to 108, 104 to 105, it will go to 60 or 55 or whatever, and it did. It turns out that it popped to 108. I said stop. So there might be risk of sellers hiding into 108 plus or minus. So don't trust rallies in AMD. It might be headed to the 70s again. Might be. Okay. So if I'm long, I'm not adding yet. You hear the instructions. If I'm long, I'm not adding yet. If it pops to 104, I definitely don't add at 104. If I want to trade it from here to 104, trade it. Get long with a stop like a trader. From an investment perspective, I don't like it, it as much as either Intel or NVIDIA because I know what Intel is and I know what NVIDIA is and now I'm lost as to what AMD is. I bought two machines. I will not buy a third one. That, that was my last AMD machine. I'm pretty disappointed with it. The hype did not live up to the expectations. Amazon. Um, so if the U.S. is going into a depression, which is what all the politicians are telling us, Amazon will suffer tremendously. So far, the sales line on Amazon has not showed that. The margins might be, so you better, uh, if you're investing in Amazon, you should, um, first of all, we don't know this guy. Okay, Bezos is no longer in charge on the day-to-day. -day. I don't know the new CEO. How good is he? I would assume Bezos picked a good person. Um... So rallies into 148, 140, 135 to 140, I think will be met with sellers. Unless they can crack above 146, I would let, let it go uh, with calls. 
I would not buy calls. I could sell puts and put spreads. In fact, I could have done that this week on Tesla and Amazon and probably would have survived the dip down to wherever. So if I were to invest in Amazon once this year, I would sell naked puts down in the low 100s and say, give me the shares if you want to. Because I know it's a good company. They own the internet. If you look left, there's a lot of weakness down below 122. So if they lose 124, I think they will skid right down to 112 in a minute. There's not a lot of transactions. So let me see if I have lines. Okay, so I'm going to put it here. If they lose 120, let's put it 124. Volume risk. There's no support from volume. It just goes whoosh, straight down. Uh, this one will kick in. So you haven't said anything new. I'm just giving you a risk of downside. This is likely to happen only if um, the market, it's not going to do it alone. Also, I want to bring your attention to this line right here. The earnings report that disappointed, I think it was two earnings ago, the stock went ballistic and spiked to high heaven. This is the top of this. I think this one right there. This is the spike. So it's a significant level. Pay attention to it. On the way up, on the way down. Okay. Arista not work. We've traded this one one time. Um, look, it's following the yellow path we had drawn for it. So it's dipping along the yellow path. It will find support somewhere between here and 160. So it depends on your longs. If you can withstand a dip to 160, there's nothing to do. If you're looking to invest in this one, I would be hard-pressed to jump in. I would nibble maybe one-third of my shares, 20% of my shares tops. If I'm a put seller, I could sell a put down in the 140s and own the shares. We traded this one successfully. I don't remember when. Um, maybe on this dip. I remember issuing an Arista Network because I didn't know anything and I asked you guys about it. So it's still in the hands of the buyers. Let's see what happens tradable for sure so I did some homework since I uh, took longs I'm long at 55 um, I would sell shares at 45 but the uh, margin required to sell those shares is incredibly stupid so I would start with a credit put spread I want to own more more shares I barely took a small bite because I said I don't know much about it I have read about it since then their uh, margins are incredibly high because they don't they don't make stuff they uh, come up with ideas and they license the ideas and all the AI initiatives have to use arm ideas so I think it's an okay company to own for the long term um, so I would I would stick with my longs I'm down four dollars per share maybe 420 I'm okay with that because it was a starter position and it was an investment, not a trade. It might be overpriced at 60 and 56 or um, it won't be at 45. So if it falls to 40 on an overreaction by the market, I will add another little bit. And if it falls to 30 after that, I will add my full position and sit on it for a couple of years and see what happens. I could also sell puts to own shares, but they're requiring a lot of margin. Um, Asana, I I did a trade that played out unless somebody hung on to their shares. Um, I think I sold sixteen dollar naked naked puts. So personally, I would uh, be assigned shares at sixteen and break even lower, or at seventeen and break even lower. I can't remember, but the trades are still working out. They're under fire. If you had taken it and didn't close it when they went down to pennies you're still in them so if you need help with that let me know the idea for me in asana is it, it's a cheap stock like dollars wise so if they credit put spread is under fire uh, so i sell a put for a credit put spread i sell a put and i buy a put below it and if the stock price falls through both and i want to own shares so I don't book the loss on the sh on the put spread. I would say, give me the shares. I'll take them at six seventeen or sixteen. And um, what happens is I can then sell my protective put and make money from that. So then my break even price would be a lot lower than what I was assigned. 
So the day I get assigned, I wake up, it's usually a Monday, I mean, a, yeah, Monday morning, I would just sell my shares and most likely, more off, often enough, I come out either green or flat or slightly red as opposed to booking a big loss on a credit put spread. And that strategy works on any stock I don't mind owning for a couple of hours. Um, AVGO, every scenario is different, so reach out for a specific scenario and I'll tell you. So this one last week fell on, I can't remember what, but it was an opportunity to get long. Can you imagine? You would have made, um, you know, it went $170 in three days. Um, pretty crazy stuff what this thing does but they lost a level that's important and now it's like if you throw me in the pool and I sink I my instinct is to pop up and take a breath of air and that's what it's doing the chart is trying to get above the water line which was the prior bounce level if I can't hold it this week I'll probably lose the low and come down to 675 but you heard the if between that before that see that weak area same volume comment there's no volume below this so if they don't hold 760 this week they'll probably go to 660 or 670 okay so there are sellers above look they're right there and there's no buyers below so be careful with that bank of america um, I want nothing to do with banks. I do not trust my country right now. I definitely don't trust trust the bank levels of liquidity. I think the government is incentivized to create a crisis right here for election purposes. So not a political comment. It's a reality comment that if I'm playing a game and I can rig the game legally, I'm going to try to rig the game. So that's what they're going to do. They're going to create a crisis somewhere, and it's easiest done in the financial sector because they control everything. So B of A could be at 25 or 24 by next month, like the end of October, early November. Maybe. I don't want to find out. It has a last-ditch effort at 27 or 26 and a half 26.7 if they lose that they are going to 24 it's almost a certainty good company or not i was always proud of what they did during the financial crisis they were forced to gobble up bad banks and they did it uh, they weren't rewarded for it other banks were but not b of a in fact they were sued for some of their actions <laughs> that the government told them to take and it's kind of a strange thing right so it has support but I would not get involved with it because rallies will be met with sellers. I think there are so many sellers hiding up here. So I will put, um, usually I, I will call resistance. Okay, I don't want to just say sellers because a lot of people don't understand what that means. It's going to be resistance. So rallies are going to be met with resistance and they may fade and they may end up here. And so I will put this one here, real risk this fall season so they know I'm talking about seasons like this is gently saying I wouldn't even sell a put spread or a put or anything um, Baxter International I honestly don't know what they do it doesn't exude confidence so that the last ditch effort th they're trying to make a lower low well every floor they tried to hold has not worked this is this it I don't know uh, study the study the company these are 2016 levels. Study the company and see. And if you want to give it a shot, take a position, say, I'm willing to lose this much money and no more. And if you lose that much money, exit and close uh, on strength. Baidu. Uh, I don't trade Chinese companies anymore. If I have to, uh, I would probably use credit spreads, but I have not in a long time. The last one, I believe, was a short on Baidu, on Baba. That worked. Uh, and then I walked away. So Baidu is falling into support. It's starting to look like the SMP, right? The SPY that had head and shoulders brewing. And if you lose it, they're going to go down this much. So I would tell you then there's this much risk from somewhere. Um, I'm not a level guy like this, trend, uh, trend guy, I should say. I am a level guy. So I will give more credence to them losing this guy and triggering something. In fact, in two segments. But what just happened? Oh, I know what happened. L this guy or this guy. 
So this is warning one. We're going down to here. A warning two. We are definitely going down to 100 or 98. And it, so they can avoid this by getting up to 140, 145. And then coming down and holding this one tick. This tick is pretty bullish. When a stock out of nowhere gaps down and then within a couple of candles recovers all of it, it usually runs fast. So I don't want to dissuade you from being long. I would say this is available. But beware of the curl, the U-turn. If it does come to fruition, they might do this anyway. Whoops. You know what I mean. So it being available and it being an investment are two different things. This is available, but be careful of the curl. Let's do this in red. Okay. Uh, Beto. So I read something. I didn't read. I need to do some research. Um, there's a there's a Wall Street thing that where they cheat, and you buy an ETF and you think it's going to behave like the underlying is trying to track. B Beto tries to track the Bitcoin futures, not Bitcoin prices. And I was told that the reason it pays a dividend is to offset a little bleed in the price of Beto as opposed to Bitcoin. In other words, if Bitcoin doesn't fall over time, they told me that Beto falls. And the dividend is to make up for that difference. If that's the case, I'm just going to have to trade the batch of Beto I have. Luckily, my entry price is under $9 because of all the dividends I just got this year since I told you to go long Beto in the 11s. So they paid $2.70 in, in dividend already this year. The last payment was like a half a penny, so it's token payment. Um, I'm going to do more research on this one, but you should do some research on your own. I'm a believer in crypto, that it has a role to play in the world. I'm a believer that there are enough buyers and wanting to buy that it just holds its value. It might as well be dog poop. I don't care. If there are billions of people willing to buy a dog poop, whether you like to own dog poop or not, it's going to have value. So I would trade dog poop if it was tradable, and I knew I would make money off of it. Uh, so don't make it too much of, oh, I don't believe in crypto because Jamie Dimon said so. Jamie Dimon is an idiot when it comes to crypto. This is his attitude. I would include Buffett in there, genius in investing, but he doesn't believe in crypto. That doesn't mean it doesn't make money. If I don't like art, art has value. Me not liking the Mona Lisa doesn't make it not valuable. It has no value because it, so many people would want to have it that you can't put a value on it, and there's only one. People will buy fake Mona Lisas for money, and they're not crazy. They love it. They want to have a piece of it, fake or real. It doesn't matter. It has a value. Same. So don't diss bit Bitcoin because somebody says it's stupid. Okay. If uh, if we lose 1280 in Beto, we will finish this arrow. I will get long Beto. I do have other cryptos. I would sell and buy Beto if we go down below 11 again. Um, I did not add. I'm still long the same amount which is not a full amount. A BMY could get a rally, but um, I don't trade it anymore. It's just too much work. I mean, the company is somewhat stable. Look at the PNL. It's huge. It's old. It just doesn't deliver the excitement and it doesn't have enough price action for me. You can see on a daily chart right here. Uh, this did not come to fruition. Uh, the potential is still there. Um, this green harmonic thing um, has a harmonic optimal price of 55. I tell you what, if it comes down to 57 or 56 or 55, I would get long it for a trade. Oh, look at this. That's what happened last time. Uh, the bulls uh, are not in charge short term. They're selling rallies, so you got to respect that. So if you get a rally to 62, I would exit. Uh, I think here they wanted BTC USD, so basically Bitcoin question, just like the other one. Um, so I, I'm long, I'm not adding. I, I am an investor for the long term. I put money in a crypto account and I trade it YOLO. Like this money, I wrote it off. I said, here's my money into the crypto account and I've lost all of this money. That's what I said in my head. It's the healthiest account I have. It's huge. It's, it's a double. It's not easy to trade, but if you use regular logic, it is. Check it out. Look at this. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go from here 
no wait how do we do this from here to here okay that's what happened last time right we went from this point to this point let's go from this point to this point what am I saying I'm saying that there is a potential of going up inside this ascending channel so right now they're trying to hold the floor at 24 7 uh, in order to make a higher high because that's what they've been doing what well, well let's see 32 versus 27 4 32 versus 24 I'm, I'm i'm revising this one to be that one so here let's put a box fight that's a big range but that's how it works Beto. Whoops, got to go down to the B's again. BX, uh, I wouldn't trade it. Leave it alone. It got added to the S&P or something, and it spiked to high heaven, and somebody said, I want to short it. I think they did, so they're making money. It can fall to 101, 102, 104, and bounce and come back down to 98. So it's not for me up at that uh, at this level nothing look at the income statement nothing got better except that it just got m more um, attainable to, to trade more action on it we've traded this super successfully in the past but I would walk away from it Avis uh, I don't know how they make money I rented one time in the last six or seven years and it was a nightmare and I paid up like I reserved the best card I have on the lot and my experience was hellacious to the point where the guy and I were yelling at each other so and I have witnesses it was a comedy an absolute comedy so I don't know how they make money nevertheless the stock is inside of support zone that extends through 165 ish so if you if you're long already and you can withstand seeing some more pain I wouldn't get out it's too late if you're looking to get long and you can withstand some pain I could nibble long probably credit put spread bull put spread it leaves distance uh, they do report in, un, in uh, under 40 days so keep that in mind um, short term just like the market uh, sinking like a stone levels to pay attention to 207 is a problem Okay. Bigger resistance, higher. Uh, what are we looking here? The Cigna. Cigna. Not a. It's never a good starting point when you go back to a failing zone. Um, this they averted. This bounce right here. Right when they stopped halfway on this dip, they rallied from this point at 267 to 284. And then I drew, I said, be careful, they could be drawing the right shoulder and going down to here. Well, they came down halfway, bounced off as 275, and made a higher high. So they avoided it for now. Okay, so now they have a higher high, higher low trend during a bad stint in the market. So that's not so bad. But it's just like they bounced here at pri prior bounce levels. I wouldn't get long going into prior fail levels. So I think there are uh, sellers hiding into 294. Colgate. I don't know if you're asking for crude or Colgate. Let's go with Colgate. Needs a bounce. If whoops. If you don't uh, hold 72.1, I think you go to 71 or 7050 or lower. They fell from point A to point B. They consolidated for weeks. If they lose the consolidation zone, they will come down to this area, 70 and a half, 70.75 to 70.25 on Colgate. Uh, CLF is tradable. Look how it, consistent it is between point A and point B. Uh, so that means uh, going into 14.8 is not a reason to go along. If you take out the prior fail of 14.8, you might end up at 15.2 where it is a sell. So you can trade this range, then kudos, 13.8 to 14.8 inside that range. I would get short in the top third, I would get long in the lower third, and ping pong. Other than that, I don't know much about the company. I wouldn't invest in it because I don't know it. If you want to invest in it for the long term, it's at a base of a super long term support zone. Go for it. Part one of two like don't go all in leave room to add 
Comerica. This is a bank. Uh, this is a pretty good PL for a bank, though. Um, I don't like it. I think it can go to 37 and a half, 38. It would make a better long down there. Uh, one can say it's hunting $8 lower. It's hunting 37.50. I think 37.50 would be a better long. I think this is the target. Oh yeah, this is a target. Comcast, uh, pretty good consolidation, pretty strong stock. We knew we were going to rally. Uh, I think I wouldn't want to get long into it until it's under 43, personally. Up here, it's not an obvious entry point. It's not like a bad entry point. It's just not an obvious entry point. I like it down here better. Better. Coin. Uh, I wouldn't touch this with a 10-foot pole. People, I'm, I'm always amazed why are people attracted to the stock. Oh, it tracks Bitcoin, then trade Bitcoin. What's the attraction here? Well, they uh, look at the income statement, people. Look at how it skyrocketed to six or seven or eight billion, and now it's three. Well, 2022 was three with giant losses. They must have bought something, and now it's uh, you know running at a pretty bad clip rate. Point six, so two point four. Anyway, it's just less than three billion run rate. If you think it's point six, just be careful. Do your homework. Uh, technically speaking, it is falling into a support zone, but it extends to 56. Okay, that was a comment b back there, so that was totally correct. If they don't get back to 76, I think they're going to 60. How about that? If they don't get back to 76 and hold it, I think they're going to 60. They have a lot of sellers hiding above 76. Costco, better hold 554, 553, otherwise it's going to 554, 544. Rallies are going to be met with sellers. Super good company, nobody denies it. Okay, buddy, what's going on here? Uh, be careful. It needs the support to hold, otherwise it'll be entry point down here. Okay, I don't know what's going on today with trading view I use it every day a thousand hours a day and today the double click is not working all right so Costco good company not an obvious entry point better entry point is when they fill this hap, uh, this hole in the gap uh, in the volume uh, so I want to see it for me 550 or lower credit puts red I could do that um, don't know what these guys are trains what is this transportation yeah so CP could be at 73 maybe lower I think they're targeting 73.2 once they lost 78 could be target Um, we can put support zone here somewhere. Rallies will be met with big sellers. So be careful of a rally. Book it because it could curl back down and make a lower low. Just be careful. Campbell, see how much better it does during bad market trends? Um, so if I was long Campbell and this rally got me out of my long, I would get out. When I wrote up the Campbell soup, I said this... I always say everybody needs a little Campbell in their in their portfolio. It doesn't mean I load up; it means I own it. For um, let's let me show you visually. So uh, 2021 September of 2021 is when the market started to crash, and this is what happened to Campbell Soup. That reminds me, somebody had a question, consumer staples, are they safer during a downturn in the economy? Well, you could have fooled me. Shazam, they were falling like a stone um, XLP 
was sinking like a stone during look at it like they led the way down every time the drop in the S&P we were trying to find what happened what happened who's dragging the S&P intraday and I would go to the uh, staples like Pepsi and Coke and sinking like a stone you think people would stop drinking and eating this and consuming staples the last you'd, you'd get rid of the discretionary stuff anyway so the answer to the question is you would think but it hasn't acted that way um, so Campbell soup has support into 42 has resistance above 4350 you take one or the other out you're gonna go in that direction I do not know what this one is, nor I don't think we should look at it. I think that's a typo of some sort. I don't know what to tell you about that one. Crocs. Um, so great P&L. Look at it. You know, ugly or not, they're awesome P&Ls. It cannot stop falling. I am long Crocs. I can't remember how. I think I sold an $80 put or a $70 put. I can't remember. Let me see. Do I have it marked here? Hopefully. 929 that's this week 8580 credit put spread oh boy okay um, we will have to deal with that if this expires this week if it's a small loss I would book it so listen up if I have this one I don't have my platform in front of me otherwise I'd answer it on the fly if um, I'll do a video on it so if I have a credit put spread of 8580 and I collected 55 cents and now it's 70 I would close it and walk away and resell another one lower if I wanted to stay long the stock they don't report to, well they do report in 25 days I do not want to roll it into an earnings report that's what I want to avoid okay and it's in the hands of the sellers rallies use any strength this week any to close it or roll it down a week tops yep. if it's statistically viable close it it's probably not a big loss Cisco bought somebody today, this week, so hence the drop. Um, they, This is old school reaction. In the olden days, when a company buys a company, the company, the buying company falls, so that's what happened with Cisco. Look, if I extended this ascending channel, nothing has happened. This was stupid. And this just saying, oh, okay, we're back to real life. Um, there might be sellers at 55, so be careful from the curl. It could come back down to 51. But if I'm long, I'm not getting out here. People who panicked out of their longs here tell me they need to go to a class that teaches charting or listen to one of these videos. Look, fail, fail, breakout, confirmed breakout, now they're back testing it. So this is an area of support from here to 50. Um, I'm not particularly a big fan of the company, but that is a dinosaur. It survived the dot-com bubble. It will survive whatever is coming our way now. Okay, so Cisco was an opportunity to not panic out. CVS has been in trouble for a bit. Um, I think they have headlines of losing business or whatever to uh, the HMO business or one of those, Blue Cross business. So now it's inside of a very well consolidated zone this is this is an old area of consolidation from november of 2020 but it is there nonetheless so i would assume that next time they drop into 65 they will try to hold it maybe they go to 62 and a half but they will try to hold it so maybe the worst is behind it having said that it's going to be a bear of a task to get out of 75 76 so you're stuck here so if i own shares and i'm stuck owning shares I know there's at least one person in the group that has that. I would be selling covered calls, and I believe they have been selling covered calls uh, to lower their entry price. So we have a breakout quietly in oil. Believe it or not, oil could go to three digits pretty soon. And these stocks are n not taking full advantage of it because their their efforts are being offset by a falling market. Chevron, Exxon. Um, if Chevron this one goes above 169 I think you can go to 178 I would bet against it but I'm not going to bet against it there's a lot of sellers that's 172 as well so uh, you should know that they have huge tailwind oil stocks so shorting them you're swimming upstream okay and oil prices are 100,000 percent manipulated 1,000 percent 
<laughs> Echo, I just read your comment. Um, Costco uh, earnings this week? I don't know. Somebody, I'm just reading now comments from earlier. Yes. Oof. Yeah, I would not touch Costco. <laughs> um, I would buy the dip in Costco. My Costco is still packed. Actually, I haven't been there in a couple of weeks, so I should go and then say, before I say that. Disney, avoid, but technically it is a good entry. Um, it is a political football, Disney. The mermaid, the release, not release, I don't know. Um, just be careful. Technically, I would sell a put spread in Disney. It is a good company. It has great assets. The PL is not bad. Um, the rhetoric counts a lot. So PL not being bad, but people saying, oh, it's going to hell. People believe it. Don't trade memes. Okay, trade actual. So if Disney holds 80, 79 and a half, it'll be fine. If it loses that, it probably goes to the middle 70s. Now, I knew there was an entry in the low 80s, and it's been here, and I have not gotten into it. I've rec I recommended it a few times for people who wanted trades, but I personally have not loved it. I've been hesitant, and I missed it the one time, and I might miss it again, but I'm hesitant because of other credit put spreads that are similar in my personal portfolio. Um, is this Dow Chemical? Maybe. Plastic, so it must be. Okay, so this company's stock is falling into a prior base. 49 should be bulletproof, like bulletproof. So if I'm an investor that hasn't uh, bailed on it, I would. this is not where I would bail on it. If I like the company and I wanted to get engaged with a starter position, I would definitely take a bite right here as an investment. So this area, this is not a wrong place to start longs. Devon, so oil companies, energy companies are exploding and Devon decided to fall into a must hold situation. So if Devon, Devon has support from here to 44. It should not lose 44, but if it does lose 44, I can't tell you how low it goes. I don't know. I literally don't know. I'm looking left, and this is a pretty hard bounce. So if you twist my arm, I would do my homework on Devon and sell puts to own shares. Oh, now I see. Okay. So the breakout was too big, and they could trigger 44 to bring them 32. 33. So I'm going to put an alert below 36. And I'm going to say target of HS. We'll see. They do have a lot of support. I'm not saying it's going there. But if it goes there, I want to get long. If I'm long, I'm not adding. End phase. So, boy, I've talked this guy to death. Every time somebody asks me about it, I give you the same advice. I sold a put spread that played out. And then it didn't play out. And then it went back to even and green. This Even this week on the rally, when the markets were having trouble and phase was green, it was even to get out. Every person I spoke to that came and asked me about end phase, I said, I would get out if it bothered you. It's still statistically viable. My credit put spread is definitely still, quote, safe to use that word. I don't usually use it. It's a four-letter four word. Um, even I closed my winners. I did not sell a put spread. I sold a naked put at 100 I actually sold them several times, and I closed most of them this week on strength. They're still winning because they're naked puts sold, and they're still statistically viable at 100 for October 20th, and I'm avoiding this surprise $20 dip out of nowhere. Okay, I don't trust this market, and this stock is definitely not trustworthy. The stock, the company P&L is fantastic, but the stock acts like a lunatic. So this week, I will close the rest. I am not interested in uh, fighting idiots out there. Uh, E.T. Phone home. Come on, Nick. You didn't go there. Yes, I did. So E.T. is doing the upside path. So at this point, I said there's a somewhere here in September. I said, whenever is that? Uh, yeah, September, early. I said we could be headed down and there will be a decision to be made in that area. We either break down or 
curl back up to retest for the breakout. Well, guess what? The breakout came to fruition. So this arrow is not showing more upside. This arrow already played out. But how can it also be interpreted is that we dipped into the, the fight zone and they're trying to hold it. So they could come back to it. But this arrow already played out. I'm just walking you through the expectations. Okay, I'm going to leave it there because I know how to explain it. So there, there is a lot of support at 1370, 1360, 1350. That's what I'm saying. They need to take out 1410 for 1450. All right, and this gets us to video number two. So let's stop the recording.